Yeah, sure. So in 2014, we founded in response to cuts in women's charities locally and nationally. My background was in women's organizations uh, and Susanna is an amazing fashion designer and we came together to utilize these amazing skills that local women have but aren't properly compensated for. So most garment workers in the fashion industry in the UK get paid £3.50 an hour. We pay at least like a London living wage and that's our main USP. So we pay living wages, that's number one. And that's how we support women's organizations. We work really closely with the women that we manufacture yeah. with. We work with, um, I'd say around five women's groups on a regular basis, um, majority in East London. And I'd say, you know, like five miles from our office. So we go and see them regularly. Um, we have, yeah, incredibly close relationships with them. They're not just like factories that we work with. We know every single person who makes every single item of our clothing. Um, and yeah, it's just a very compassionate, equal way of working. So we've always focused on being a slower kind of fashion brand and that's necessary when we're not making with factories, we're working with people that we have really good like relationships with and they're like that we let people have time for a cup of tea and a chat <laughs> rather than kind of strict deadlines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we expect it so they need it too. But we we make a lot of things to order and we only use the best materials that we can find. So we release a product a month beautifully crafted on pre-order so not an inch of fabric gets wasted. We make scrunchies and hair ties out of any fabric that is kind of scraps um, and just really commit to using biodegradable, reclaimed or recycled materials which suits uh, amazingly sources. Yeah, and we've just been certified um, with a B Corp certification so really happy about that. <laughs> I had limited experience in the fashion industry, so Sue's coming on board as my co-founder and designer was incredible, but the first few years were really tricky. I was 23, I'd just graduated from a history degree. I was completely teaching myself how to run a fashion brand from scratch, and that was particularly challenging. But I think the massive wave of interest in sustainability from brands in the fashion industry at large has really helped and propelled us like those past years. Um, and now everyone is talking about sustainability in fashion, which is incredible. I feel definitely harder. Um, it's harder for us to like stand out in the industry, I suppose, even though we've been doing this since day one. But I think it keeps us on our toes and we can never be complacent with what we're doing. And it just shows that we have to like shout about what we're doing at every stage of the journey because we have like nothing to hide in our supply chain. And we're really proud of it. So it kind of, yeah, it keeps us, you know, um, I don't know, on our toes, yeah. It is quite collaborative um, because Sophie has really Mainly good taste. You have really good taste, and <laughs> Sophie designs a lot of our slogan tees, which are our bestsellers. I'm more of a graphics person. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I'll, I'll do a lot of the concept building. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from nature. Want to create really uplifting, optimistic designs that are like healing and, you know, really like cocoon the person and make them feel like safe and the, their best selves, really. Yeah, well, as you can see, maybe um, on our rail, it's like a, a full spectrum of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. So, we do, yeah, we do love to have like big, bold colours that are, yeah, a bit out there and, and mm -hmm. recognisably us. So, all of them, really. Century modern art references as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So, we try to use organic cotton where we can. Um, we do use a lot of reclaimed fabrics, which are fabrics that are um, diverted from landfills. So we like to use what's already on the planet as opposed to um, always using, you know, raw materials. Um, but if we do use raw materials, we use Tencel, which is a wood pulp um, and it's made in a closed loop system. So all of the chemicals and water that's used goes back into the system and nothing's, you know, put into the environment that's uh, not, not good.
Our roles can look really different on any day. I'm typically doing public speaking, maybe doing some finance spreadsheets, doing all of our comms and marketing. Um, Susanna, you're running around London. <laughs> yeah, so I work with all of our maker groups. Um, I also run our customer support, so I do our bookkeeping. I'll be doing making mood boards, prints, um, organising photo shoots, um, everything. Fun. Yeah, managing. Do you find that hard or do you enjoy it? It's kind of what I'm used to now. I do like doing a little bit of everything and like, I think I'm definitely attracted to that kind of like, lots of different things. It means it never gets boring. You never, never stuck twiddling your thumbs or something to do that. Sure. Yeah, we have complete control over everything that's in the, that, that we do in the business, um, which I think is why we can, we're able to be so ethical and sustainable is because mm. every, we have the last say on every kind of decision. Exactly, our principles run through every single decision that we take and that's really quite rare. Most of the products, we do have jewellery, so we work with a, a women's cooperative um, in India and it's completely recycled gold and silver jewellery um, designed here um, and they're made like not to order obviously because that takes a long time to kind of like ship over but everything else, our products that we release once a month, they are made to order or like on a pre-order basis. I think so, because we're not wasting any stock and also enables us to produce in size 6 to 30, which makes us much more size inclusive, which is a real challenge in the ethical Yeah, yeah, fashion we don't space. have to worry about like buying and like what sizes. We don't have any waste, basically, and, and like waste stock is such a massive issue for brands. Yeah. Not only just creating the mm -hmm. product, but like what do you do if it doesn't sell? And, what, and then we also, we care a lot about the aftercare as well, so we, we have um, repair, repair service. Repair service. So we're having a retail, a resale service mm -hmm. on our website. Um, so we look at the whole life cycle of the product, basically. Yeah. There's loads of debate to be had around kind of social media, where you're funding your money. In the past, we have used social media ads. We're not currently spending with social media companies. Um, except on a kind of more ad hoc basis. And it is really interesting when you see your balance sheet and you're saying, okay, I'm spending this much on wages, I'm putting this much to Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> so that's something we've tried to re-navigate. Um, I'd like to think that our press uh, activity, which is our kind of one of our biggest drivers, is done in an ethical way because we're transparent, we're certified, we're not kind of greenwashing because we're industry experts at this stage in sustainability. So a lot of greenwash is rife in product press. Especially in fashion. Yeah, mm. exactly. Mm. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. We've both been in the sustainable space for 10 years each now. So yeah. And our old tagline was um, no sweatshops, no Photoshop. So we try and be as as um, ethical in our in our in the creation of our products as well. And um, our representation of <laughs> Oh no, it was, it was Sarah actually. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, Mailout is an amazing social enterprise warehouse. I think they're the only one in London. Um, and they basically train um, people with learning dis dis disabilities to pack and send out our stuff. Um, and they're fantastic and they provide loads of holistic help. It's just like an incredible place to go. And yeah, and yeah, spend time. It's like one of the perks of the job. Yeah, it's really nice to go chat to Stephen about Star Trek or whatever he's, he's <laughs> watching at the minute. <laughs> Ooh, it's so interesting because I think in sustainability a lot of people are talking about biomaterials, kind of textiles innovation, but I always bring it back, the most exciting sustainable thing you can do as a brand is pay living wages to your garment workers, which doesn't sound as exciting, but it's the way forward and especially a lot of laws are coming into effect in Europe, which will probably be extended in the UK eventually. Yeah. Um, around people paying their garment workers fairly. And there's been studies done that show that if you pay your garment workers a living wage, that's the most sustainable action you can take yeah. because you can't physically produce as much stock when you're paying a decent wage and yeah. putting people into decent conditions, not making them work 16 hours a day with overtime, for example. Ooh, 
we've won well, loads of awards. Awards. <laughs> yeah. awards. Yeah. We've just got an award that's embargoed, so we can't talk yeah. about that. Because cool. I think our day to day is so, it's not, it's not unglamorous, but yeah. it's very much like, you know, um, a little mm. bit unglamorous. It's really <laughs> so it's really cheesy. nice when we get yeah. awards and get recognition because a lot of the time it's just me and Sophie like, come on, keep going, we can keep this. And also it's cheesy, but like going to a small village in Derby to look at a new machine with our one of our makers, yeah. like spending the whole day with her and her making me the most amazing pat launch I've ever had in my life. Mm. That is like the highlight of my, my job. Yeah, so we're looking at if we could potentially franchise. We're going to be doing merch for different brands as well because um, we've got this printing, t-shirt printing mm -hmm. press that we're setting up. Um, and yeah, we, we're kind of more likely to kind of explore wholesale as well because that's something that we've not done previously. I would love to create like a blueprint so that more organisations can behave and operate like Birdsong does. So I want to have that kind of blueprint, whether it's through like a document or franchising or something like that. I think having like a record of, of how we work so that other businesses can replicate it, that would be our dream.